Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 30 of Darwell20's Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode series. Uh, today, I'm just, you know, doing some stuff. Pro tip, time in a bottle works pretty well on the light wells collecting starlight. Just, you know, as an FYI, in, in case anybody, you know, wanted to know that information, you now do. Thought that might be some information you might want to know. Why'd you cap out at 14k? That can't be right. Elite fluid tanks hold more than 14k. That's weird. Don't they? Yes, they hold 56k. Ha! That's weird. All right. Make sure to do this at night, obviously, because uh, you get better starlight accumulation at night. So if you're going to do this, you know, nighttime is better. You'll get far more starlight um, and you'll get, you know, much better stuff. Um, the reason is because I remember last episode we were making crystals. Like, I used a lot of liquid starlight <clears throat> for all those crystal improvements. These flares, by the way, I don't know that they have a use yet or at, you know, even if there's a planned use for them. Uh, that would be the immersive engineering one, right? Yeah, Faraday chest plate. Don't need that. Um, so we don't have to worry about their existence, really, which is cool. So that holds 56. I think this holds something like 40. Yeah, so that's that's groovy right there. Hooray! So lots of liquid starlight for today because we have things to test out. So remember last episode, we worked on getting ourselves a Celestial Collector Crystal. This in theory, should do a really good job of, um, you know, making... Oh boy, Compressed Creeper. You can blow up. Thank you. Compressed Creepers, when they explode, don't turn into 10 Creepers. If you kill them, they do. Pro tips. The direwolf. Uh, so our current Starlight level is that. Let's see if we can improve this a bit, right? So what we're going to do is pop over here. We're going to drop a Celestial Crystal. This is a multi-block structure that was pre-set up. Uh, in, in this location, right? You can see it uh, if we take a look at the astral book, which may or may not be somewhere in my inventory. Okay. Uh, is it in the attunement chapter that that's listed or is it in... It might be in Constellation. Uh, enhanced Collector Crystals. Um, so you basically make this multi-block structure. We have to put Liquid Starlight around it uh, to, to improve it even more. But basically we can bind the liquid starlight, or we can bind the, the, the crystal here. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, to the, this dude, right? So he's currently like right in the middle of the chest there, let's say. Let's see if we can bind him all the way over there or if I have to use, oh, that's right, we have to keep this guy in my hotbar. Selected. Hello, creeper. Can you reach all the way over there? You may not be able to reach from all the way over there. I think that's the case. I think we might need to use some lenses for this if we're gonna do it. Hmm. That's kind of, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the max range of binding collector crystals is. Can we test this a little bit real quick? Let's see, can I bind you here? How about here? How about here? Linked to crystal block. All right, so that worked. Here, here, here. Yeah, so this, but not not this block. Okay, so this seems to be about the limit. If I do that, unlink all links, that should be cool, right? So that's the limit. So let's get our tape measure here. We'll put you in distance mode and we'll see exactly how far that is. And it's about, yeah, that makes sense. Right around 16 blocks. That's 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 a pretty standard distance for, for this mod. So if I want to link from over there to over here, what's our distance rating from, let's say, because here's another one, right, that we can use. We'll probably have to use lenses to make this work. Yeah, we're well past the 16 block distance there. That, that makes sense because that's pretty much mirrored. So, yeah. Huh, how do we want to do this? We can use lenses, which is an option, totally an option, right? Not a not a bad option. 
We could use lenses uh, throughout the starlight. I want to say that weakens it a little bit, but like, let's try it, right? Um, so for redirecting starlight, I think that's in the attunement chapter. And uh, crystal lens or focused starlight. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So what we want to do, since the crystal used to construct a lens is capable of redirecting this light, it makes up most of the lens. The properties the crystal had will affect the transmission rate significantly. The bigger the crystal, the more lenses that can be crafted at once. Uh, okay, cool. A very impure crystal will most likely occlude starlight passing through by the dust and other material it has embedded within. The quality of the facets cut into the lens will determine how focused the beam or transmitted light is, further reducing losses. Right. So basically, the size attribute determines how many lenses you get per craft. I believe. Um, now that's interesting that this guy requires three glass lenses. I wonder if that's a custom recipe. Oh no, it's the rock crystal that you that matters, right? So it's the rock crystal stats right here that matter, right? So the bigger the rock crystal, the more um, lenses we'll get per craft. The more uh, cutting, the higher the cutting level uh, equals less loss, um, and the more uh, I think. Purity also equals less loss. So how are we for regular old rock crystals? Well, you know, we can use Celestials on that. Let's use like a not terrible Celestial. Like what if we did this one, right? Because that's 95% purity. I've got two 100% purities in here somewhere. Here's the other one, right? So these two are 100% purity. Those are the crystals we grew at the end of the last episode. So let's use this one to make the lens, uh, not this glass lens, but, uh, yeah, this lens, yes. So gold, a little aquamarine, some ruined marble, and some wood, and we should be good, right? Okay. So gold, a little bit of aquamarine, ruined marble, which we should have, some wood. Cool. Um, yeah. And then we just need the glass lenses, which... Uh, I would like to do the starlight infusion. Can we make the starlight altar thing? You think we have the, the power for that? I mean, we have the resources for it, easily. Um, having the power, we should be able to manifest the power. Yeah, I think we can do that. And that would make lens crafting a lot easier. So let's do that as well. Um, so spectral relay, isn't that what it was called? Am I spelling it wrong? Starlight Infuser. Yeah, oh boy, I got that all kinds of wrong, didn't I? Starlight Infuser. All right, so two gold and a star metal. Uh, two gold and a star metal. We've got some star metal up there. Uh, and then uh, just a bucket of liquid starlight and a bunch of marble, right? Uh, so do we have some iron plates? We have one iron plate. Let's get a couple more. So I think the last uh, bucket I had I used... Okay, so we'll do that. We'll go get ourselves a bucket of liquid starlight. It shouldn't be too hard of a thing to get. Okay, now it's daytime, so now it's as good a time as any to make another thing that I want to make. Wow, we have a lot of things to make. Uh, I want to make an imperfect ritual stone, which needs four obsidian, four stone burn, and a weak blood orb. That seems relatively easy to do. Uh, blood magic area? Where's my blood orb? We'll borrow the weak one here. I don't think we have any reason to keep that over there, right? Four obsidian. Four stone burnt, which I'm pretty sure I have stored in here. And that is a very easy craft for an imperfect ritual stone. Cool. And the weak blood orb, I guess I'll put back in the blood magic area. Home base. All right. Uh, lapis. I need a block of lapis. And the imperfect ritual stone from blood magic allows me to make it nighttime. How cool is that? All we gotta do is pop over here and find a place to put you. How about, like, right here? I'm pretty sure the lapis goes on top of the ritual stone, right? Okay. So now I just want to get the appropriate marbles for the starlight infuser. So the starlight infuser needs two engraved, two chiseled, 
right? Um, two engraved. I mean, I didn't have any engraved. Do I need a rune? I do need a rune. Let's just get everything but. All right, so we need one, two, three, four, five, six pillars. Okay. We need two chiseled. And we need two engraved. And that should be it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and the star metal. Cool. So let's just get uh, two regular marble and we'll chisel it up. That's all I can plan. Okay, let's put away... Oh, boy, I have so much junk in my inventory. Why do I always have so much junk? This guy can go away. Uh, for the chisel. Okay, you guys can become uh, engraved marble. Okay, cool. Alright, so first step, Starlight Infuser. Um, chiseled marble, didn't I have that? Didn't I have two chiseled? Oh, I, ch I chiseled the wrong marble. Well, there's your problem. Derpy Dyer, doing derps. Alright, so that needs a lot of starlight, right? So let's first make it nighttime. Ha! Uh... Huh, that makes life a lot easier for this mod, right? Um, let's borrow this crystal from over here. Okay. So you don't have quite the starlight power needed, right? But by doing this, we can link you straight into here. And that will focus. Wow, that filled it up a lot. I may not even need that, that ritual over there because that is a really big increase. Um, that's cool. I'm I'm second guessing my decision to use those. Like it's they're they're part of the structure, so that's the reason I was gonna use it. But like I guess a nearly maxed stat celestial collector crystal is pretty darn good. <laughs> um, that said, we could use those. These are ritual platforms right here. This one uh, is a ritual platform. Is there another one mirrored over here? No, I don't think so. Yeah, not really. But uh, you know, we could. That's weird. Why would there be? Actually, I think that's meant to be something. Um, hey, look, we have a starlight infuser. Nice. So now, quest complete. Excellent. We pop that dude there. We pop this guy into on use empty mode. You want a full thing around there. Now, every time you craft, there's a chance that some of this liquid starlight is going to go away. Um, so we need to be aware of that. Uh, and, and refill it as needed. And I mean, at some point we could probably look into automating that refilling, but for now, let's grab a few of you. And that makes this craft a lot easier, right? I think I have to hit with that. Hooray! Thank you, Multiblock, for being already formed. You're the best. Good base. Good astral building. Hooray! That is awesome. So what used to be um, this, right? Two Quicksilver, two Aquamarine, Mana Glass, Mirrored Glass, Arcane Workbench, 50V, Crystals, is now literally just place this on here and hit it with the thing. And that's lenses, right? How great is that? Super cool. Nice. Now remember, if you go to craft and it doesn't work, it means one of the pools of liquid here got used up. Uh, so you have to replace it. But so far we've had luck. No, no, not luck this time. Uh, that one's probably missing. Looks like it's a block, right? So there you go. Good to go. So I'm not going to make the lens anymore. I don't think it's necessary, at least at this point. Maybe when we upgrade to the next tier altar, it'll be useful. Um, or maybe when we have a collector crystal over here for a ritual, which I think I have a ritual in mind that I'd like to do, but we'll see. Um, so that's cool beans, right? Uh, next up, let's get these guys. So what was it that I needed for a ritual anchor, right? Um, one stardust and two glass lenses. So do we have everything we need for that now? We do, hooray! And more than enough starlight power to craft it. Beautiful. And ritual anchors are going to make it so that I can bind my regen ritual over there 
to the to the blood magic tranquility area. Cool. And then I think there's another ritual I have in mind to to make. Cool. Do all the crafting. Gotta love all that auto crafting beautifulness. All right, so you come with me. Okay, we're gonna pop the ritual anchor. Ideally. Like right there. And I think what I wanna do Selected Ritual Pedestal. Alright, I clearly don't know how to use Ritual Anchors. Ritual Anchor, where are you? Am I in the right chapter? No. Constellation. Ritual Anchor. Uh, focusing Starlight into a Ritual Pedestal allows uh, the structure to manifest the attunement of that constellation. Unfortunately, the structure requires to maintain the blah, 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 can be blah, space. Redirecting the crystal's effect using a specially constructed linking stone placed five blocks above the Ritual Pedestal and then linking the anchor to a matching anchor any distance away should solve this. Oh, I need to have another anchor. Okay, five blocks above. Interesting. So that's why you get two per craft. That makes sense. Okay, so... Five blocks above the ritual pedestal. So one, two. Three, four. And this is the fifth block above. I feel like that's right. Attuned to a Vetus. That's the one we want, right? And you're just a regular old. Okay, so then can I bind Oh yeah, look at that. Cool. It's beaming it up. So then we bind you over to here linked nice look at that how cool is that now we're getting regen over here how beautiful that is awesome that is super duper awesome okay so with that taken care of we've got the ritual anchor up and running right here nice all right let's pop back to our astral area uh, Cause now I think I want another ritual altar. Can I have another one of those uh, ritual pedestal? So it just needs, um, you know, any kind of rock crystal. So I kind of don't want to use any of my good ones in here. Though I could use like one of the junky celestials, like this guy, just cause I have them. I don't know that I would use them for anything important, right? The only thing, anything important that I would care about stats for, I would take this 900, 100, 100, or this 900, 100, 100, and split them, right? But we're going to use them for something important in a minute. Um, but I'm always going to want to have one that I keep splitting so that I keep getting 100 purities. Because purity is the hardest stat to upgrade. Uh, so for that, we're going to need four pillars and two chiseled. Right? So four pillars and two chiseled. Okay. Um, and a liquid starlight bucket and three ruined and two gold. Okay. So three ruined. I'm hoping that I can do this thing. Uh, let's put, I'm gonna put, well, actually I might use this crystal cause it's good enough. I'm gonna do that, yeah. Um, for the ritual bit, yeah. So let's get our, this dude, I don't even know why you're not in my inventory, bro. All right. Uh, I want to turn you guys into ruined. Chiseled up. Cool. All right, so are we cool now? Yes, just a, a bucket of starlight and some gold. And I could move this starlight collector bit at some point. So many things I want to craft, so many cool things to make. All right, so now you, Ritual Pedestal, are good to go. And look at this. Even during, uh, oh, wrong thing. Even during daylight hours, this thing has a ton of power. See why I said getting collector crystals makes a huge difference in Astral? Yeah, super cool. All right, so I want you to come here. Now, this dude, I'm gonna place here, which should be the ritual. And let's get our book, because I wanna know exactly which constellation I wanna have. 
All right, so I am uh, discovering new constellations here. I want to say this is this one. No, this looks wrong. I want to say, actually, yeah, you might be this, this, this. No, that's not right either. You have to be one of these two. Maybe, maybe it is this one. Looks a little bit off in terms of the shape. This doesn't look right to me. That's weird because I thought I had all the ones that I... I thought I had all these already, right? I know Vicio. I had all the majors, right? I have this one. I have this one. I have this one. I have this one. Yeah, I have all the majors. I mean, the only two minors we have is Boots which this doesn't look like, and Fornax, which it also doesn't look like, right? Because there is one, two, three, four, five, six. It might be like this, but this doesn't look right to me. You know, it doesn't look right at all. It doesn't look like boots. I'm comparing it, and I'm like, no, that's totally wrong looking. It's weird. Yeah, that doesn't look like boots. And it's too many dots to be Fornax, because Fornax is only five, Chris, five points of light. That's weird. How about you? What are you? Uh, you could be Fornax, because that's this, 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 and that. Cool. All right, so that means you have to be Boots, because that's like the only other constellation I don't know at this point. Unless, I'm under the impression that you won't see the constellations in the telescope until you open, or until you discover the paper, right? But that just doesn't look like Boots to me, unless it's like this, 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 this. That, that's what I would expect it to be if it were actually boots, but it doesn't look like boots. I mean, this kind of matches. But yeah, that if that were the right pattern, that would have done the thing. And that's kind of what boots look like, but not really. Huh. Oh, well, what's four next get me? There's a constellation I'm looking for, and I don't think I have it yet. Um, yeah, that does that. All right, let me come back in a sec. So here's an interesting thing. Uh, there's another constellation here. I don't think that one's boots either. That one also is new and only has three stars in it. No, four. That's weird. I didn't think you saw constellations until you discovered them in the book. Now this looks like boots. Hang on, this might be boots. Oh, I really thought that was boots. <laughs> it looks like it. It really does. I'm just gonna redraw it in case I didn't do a good enough job. But I think I did do a good enough job. Yep, definitely not boots. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right, so here's a pro tip. Nap. Wait. Haha. -ha. Cool. So with that now, it makes it a little bit easier to discover constellations because you can just flip between night and day all the time, and that's cool. So that doesn't look like boots. Uh, this one could be. Could be. But I think that's the same one we saw earlier that I said was not boots, but we'll see if I'm right. Yeah, no, definitely not. Hey, buddy. I'm trying to look at my telescope here. I'm looking for a cool constellation. All right, let's come back in a minute when I find what I'm looking for. How's that sound? Also, I might need to go explore around the world um, to find more of these pages, right? Because, um, you know, we don't we don't have quite enough at the moment. Cool. Be right back. Hey, I found boots. Nice. All right, now what's what, what's this one get me? This might not be the one I want, but it's the only other one I had. Oh yeah, that's the animal one. Okay. 
Yeah. Cool. That makes animals drop stuff, I think. All right. Uh, I think my next task now, then, will be to explore the world a little bit and find me uh, some chests with more of those astral pages in them. Because uh, I need more constellations. So let's come back in a minute uh, while I go explore the world. More mana weave. Sweet. And uh, we will uh, hopefully find some starlight pages. All right. Back in a few. What in the world is this structure? I don't know, but it looks cool. Might be from uh, that mod that adds structures to the world. My only assumption. Neat though, but there's a village here, so I'm gonna go raid all their, their chests and whatnot. Gotta say, it's a little bit tricky to find some of those astral structures, and I haven't found any parchment papers in non-astral structures so far. So like, I checked out a couple dungeons and a couple villages, and thus far, no such luck. So I have to look for like an astral little, this, this, this is an astral structure. That's what we need. That's what we need. Come on now, catch up world. I know, I know, I taxed you pretty hard. Look, I found mob spawners, I found all kinds of cool stuff. I've been breaking every bookshelf I come across, right? All kinds of good things. Um, let's drop you and you. Anything else I can get rid of at the moment? I do have my bag here. I can put you guys away for the time being. I found a flux infused helm. Just a mob dropped it. Uh, I don't need stone bricks and nether brick. Probably don't need this at the moment or that. We've got enough armor to last a lifetime, literally. Oh, that's weak. Weak. I'm not taking the diamond because I don't need diamonds. I need parchment paper. That's what I'm in. That's what I'm exploring this world for. That's what we're looking for, guys. Continuing along. Back in a minute. So I found some iridium, so that's nice at least. Uh, hopefully that'll play a role when we get to more industrial and crafty things. Quick pit stop back at the Blood Magic Altar to refill my uh, stuff. Uh, did I cap it out? I capped it out. All right, 150,000 LP is the cap. Today we learned. Nice. A little bit of regen. Good to go. All right, back to exploring. So guys, I actually think the sextant here is what's supposed to help me with this. Um, this guy, and, and, and the book said to consider holding two at once. So I'm going to see what's up. But I think this mostly works at night, um, like all things astral, right? Like that's a that's a pretty standard theme, make it nighttime. But apparently, what if we held one in each hand? It said to hold one in each hand, but there's like, it says in the book, right? There's also an advanced sextant, which I also don't know how it works. So we're gonna figure that out in a minute. Uh, but it says in the book. Was it under attunement of this? No, it's under dis exploration. Yeah, because you explore. Ha -ha. Um, it's also to pick up the resonations of the ancients, guiding you to various structures they left behind. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find constellation paper. Um, so while holding this accent in your eye, you're able to see the energies coalesce as a star in the night sky. Dragging and dropping the structure onto the star displayed will lock the sextant onto its location if the color frequencies match, allowing you to easily navigate to it during the night. Selecting a different star and locking its frequency will change your navigational target for the sextant. Imagine holding one in each hand. So I'm not entirely sure what that means. Hey, there's a, whoa, hello. All right, so we found stars, but now how do I, hey. Ancient Shrine? Desert Shrine? Hey, cool. Okay, cool. Ancient Shrine? Small Shrine? Oh, ho, ho, neat. Okay, I get it. Hold on. That's going to the Small Shrine, right? And this one... Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Oh, 
What are you? Hey, there's a big shrine. Sweet. Okay. So now, okay. So that's neat. So when I hold this one, it shows me that. And this one shows me that. So there should be a big shrine over there. I'm guessing that's the big shrine that I already found, right? So that should be a small shrine in that direction. So let's zip over there and see if that's correct. So what I'm gonna do is put the small shrine and let's, let's make this one be the desert shrine. Okay, so we'll do small shrine first. Okay, that's not gonna be ideal for me. But there should be a small shrine in this general direction. And hey, look at that, there is. Sweet. I already discovered it, so that's a that's a little bit of a bummer, but it works. So that's what we need to do. That's cool. Okay. So you're the desert shrine, so there should be a desert shrine in this general direction. Right? If I'm understanding this correct, and I think I am. I think I figured it out how it works. You hold shift, by the way. I don't know if I said that. Could this be the desert shrine? It looks like it. That's cool. Lesser crimson portal. Oh, hello. That's a thong crafty thing, isn't it? Run away for a minute. Not prepared for a fight at the moment. <laughs> Sweet, the Crimson Rights book. That's usually a nice thing to get our whole hold our hands on. Whoa, look at that. The Desert Shrine has one of those things going on. Whoa, what is hitting me? Uh, let's eat some food. Husks, please. Trying to, wow, okay, cool. Something from a distance is blinding me. That's not that's not cool. I think it's you. Take that, buddy. Alright. So let's let's make sure to break all the things here, right? Okay, that's neat. So the desert shrine is a big shrine. That's super cool. Is that gonna get rid of all my water? That would be nice. Today we learned desert shrines exist. I didn't even know these were a thing. But that's cool. Nice. And look, there's even like a little collector crystal up there. Very fancy. Starvest all this marble because you know you need it for thongcraft or uh, for astral structures. Whoa, four constellation papers. That's what's up. That's what's up. Lucerna. Spoiler alert, that's what I was looking for. Lucerna. Octans. Pelotrio. Horogolum. That's also a really good one. Horlo Horologium. I'm almost certain that's a tick accelerator. Almost certain that that's a tick accelerator. All right, let's go home and start peering through. So Horol Horologium only appears in the night sky after uh, a solar eclipse. So you know those eclipses that happen every now and then, right? So the night after a solar eclipse is the only time Horologium shows up in the night sky. And I think it's once every 30 Minecraft days. Um, so it's rare that you get it. And remember, it has to be in the night sky in order for this structure to work. So if you want to make a crystal, you have to get Horologium by, by drawing it, you know, in the night sky. And then you also have to uh, uh, have it in the night sky when you, when you associate the crystal with it. But it's, it's neat. All right, so let's do this. Uh, let's get our constellations. I'm going to discover these in my telescope. So we got Lucerna, which is nice. I definitely want Lucerna because that's the one I was actually looking for. 
Uh, so I'm excited that we found that. Uh, so let's see if we can figure out where Lucerna is. That might, one, two, three, no, that's too many. Um, Lucerna is the one I'm gonna focus on right now. And we'll see if we can get it. This might be Lucerna. This might be it. Yay, that was Lucerna, nice. All right, now let me get um, the next page of constellations up here. So remember, Horologium is probably not gonna be in the night sky unless there was a constellation that day, or, or, or uh, a thing that day. So this could be Octans, actually. And these are all minor constellations. Sweet, good guess in Direwolf. Oh, it's becoming, I have no idea what that is. That might be, I think it's gonna be too, yeah, it's getting too bright out. Gonna see if he's still up. He might still be there. All right, so that's possibly this one. And this one I don't recognize, so I'm wondering if he's newish. That was Pelotrio. Cool. So then the only one we don't have in a uh, drawn in the sky now, from the ones I've discovered at least, uh, is Horologium, which uh, won't be there unless it was a a thing. All right, cool. So let's take a nap. So the reason I wanted uh, the constellation Lucerna. The light of this constellation seems immensely bright, despite it being far away, bright enough that it may inhibit enemies from arising entirely in its area. The ritual effect is it prevents hostile creatures from spawning. Ha ha. So what we want um, is a rather nice um, crystal. Uh, I'm not sure. Mob spawn prevention probably seems like a really good one to make good, right? So we're going to want to get a celestial crystal. And we're going to want to turn it, attune it to Lucerna, right? So let's make sure Lucerna's in the sky. I'm not sure how to be sure of that, short of just looking for it or, yeah, we'll just do that. I mean, we can, yeah, that's it, Lucerna. It's right there, right there in the sky. Perfect. All right, Lucerna, you're awesome. So what we need is to attune this celestial crystal using this. So that's step one. And we're gonna find out how efficient this thing is by itself. Now there's ways to boost, um, like significantly boost ritual effects, like really super duper efficiently. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that after we figure out how good it is by itself. So step one will be get the Lucerna ritual going by itself without any augmenting, right? Step two will be to augment it if necessary. Hey, there we go. Cool, so Lucerna, we'll drop that guy in there. He'll get infused or, or, or attuned to that starlight, right? Which basically means um, we can do the ritual effect of Lucerna. I'm a little excited now, because it means no mob spawns in my base. That's what I'm talking about. How can you not like love magic based mods? I know a lot of people want to see tech, but like, come on, dudes. Tech is cool, but magic is magical. So that. Might be working. Are you doing anything? Lucerna. Now, it's not, it, it prevents mobs from spawning in its area. It doesn't despawn mobs that already exist in its area. So I think what we should do is take a nap, clear the area of mobs, and then see if it's going to behave itself. Cool. So, wow, do I have a lot of junk. Do we have any extra crates? I'm thinking we probably don't have extra crates laying around, but I really need more storage space. Um, this 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 book, I'm not going to read the Thongcraft book yet. I'll read it when it uh, when when the time comes. And you know what? I'll put the some rotten flesh and zombie brains over there. Why not? And we could eat some food. 
cool. Um, I do have some chests. Wow. Got so much junk, guys. <laughs> so much junk. I don't even know what to do with it. I'm going to put my books in here. Just want to remember that I have those. You can go in here. Uh, that's that stuff. What else? What else? What else? What else do I need to put away? Mob drop. I thought I went over there specifically to put the Crimson Rights book away. Oh, I put my astral book in there by mistake. <laughs> Dire, please. All right, everything else we can clean up this way. So what I'm going to do, right... is clean up this stuff. Okay. Uh, we'll deal with these things in a minute. Let's make sure there's no mobs down here anywhere, if I can avoid it. And then I'm going to make it nighttime, and then we're going to validate that our little plan here worked. So in theory... This should prevent mob spawns pretty nicely. Let's figure out where this skeleton is hiding. Actually, I think there might be a dark spot in that area, so that might be why. So we won't worry about that one spot. So if mobs spawn in this area, or don't spawn in this area anymore, that would be super cool, right? Why do I feel like you're just not working, bro? Is this ritual altar, like, wrong or something? That could be the case. Marble arch. Ah, they need to be marble arches around the outer edge. Hang on. Hang on. Marble arch. Do we have any of those? Yes. Marble arch. That's why. That's why. Um, where's my... Exchanger. Marble arch. Not that mode. Flip you back. Marble arch, marble. And this one just gonna place. Hey, that's what I expected to see. Particle effects. Now I feel like it's working. Now I feel like it's working. That's cool. So what we want to do is basically get rid of mobs, right? Quick nap. Um, make sure there's no monsters nearby. What I'm going to do to make sure there's no monsters nearby is a good old Minecrafty trick of fly away and then fly back, right? So that should cause mobs to despawn as there would be no players nearby. Cool. And then we'll make it nighttime. And we'll see what the radius of this thing looks like. So in theory, there should be no more mob spawns in a pretty good radius around our base. And if we want it to be a larger radius, what we can do is attune a collector crystal to Lucerna and focus it on this guy. And that'll make it an even more powerful radius. And then there's even more things we can do to make it stronger if we, if we so desire. So like right now, I'm feeling pretty good about the lack of mob spawns. Like, look at this, dudes. It's actually a pretty good range. Do mob spawn in the world at all at this point? <laughs> it's possible they don't. <laughs> it's possible we just shut down mob spawning in there. I mean, that's a pretty powerful crystal, to be fair. To be fair, that is a really good crystal. Hey, look, there's some. There's some mobs. Okay, cool. So, I mean, right? Like, that's not a bad radius, guys. That ain't bad at all. That's pretty darn cool. All right, I'm going to call that uh, a success. Nice. And oh my, I was having so much fun. We let an episode run really long again. My bad. I'm sure you guys really are upset by that. Well, for now, Double Toy signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. Uh, and now we've got pretty much no mob spawns uh, in this area. So no more monsters outside my base. No more worrying about the light levels, right? Like, dudes. And that's just going to work. Like, that should be fine for a while. That should be really fine for a while. I'm really uh, quite pleased by that process. 
All right. So for now, that was my signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. Take it easy.